Razor Beat Jedi. What's going on, guys? Back in another video. In this video, we're going to cover a couple topics. First, we're going to talk about Hot Toys Darth Vader from Turn of the Jedi that was recently released. Then, we're going to talk about potential figures from the Acolyte. I know, I know, don't jump ship yet, but we'll get into it. Starting off, we have the Hot Toys Darth Vader from Return of the Jedi that was recently released. I gotta say, looks pretty good. Now, I'm no expert. I don't know all the nuances of the suit and the differences from film to film. But I can tell the difference between this one and the recently released DX2728 Darth Vader from the Kenobi series. Most notably, the, the figure just looks, I don't want to say fat, but bigger. Not in a sense of muscular, but it just looks like a bigger body in a suit. The armor that covers the shoulders looks bigger. It looks like it kind of doesn't fit as flush as the Kenobi Vader. And the biggest difference is that Sebastian Shaw head sculpt. It's kind of funny. Um, I grew up around this shit. I grew up around Star Wars. My entire life, I can picture seeing toys and action figures and other other things with Sebastian Shaw's likeness as Darth Vader. And it's almost ingrained in me to see this portrait, this head sculpt, as Darth Vader. It, it's weird. I can't really explain it. I can't unsee this version of Darth Vader. Now, I know Hayden Christensen is my favorite version of Anakin, and I opted for the Kenobi Vader because that Hayden Christensen likeness and now we've got the battle damage Darth Vader coming next year with the full exposed helmet of Hayden Christensen. So by all means, Hayden's my favorite Darth Vader per se. But I mean, my entire life, I can just picture Sebastian Shaw as Darth Vader. And if we're going to talk about iconography, which one of these figures is more iconic, which Vader is iconic, it's going to be this one. I mean, a lot of collectors are going to choose this Vader over the Kenobi Vader. Now, I don't have this on pre-order. Um, I really don't have any intention of getting it. As I said, Hayden's my preferred Darth Vader. But if I didn't know that next year we're going to get that super battle damage Darth Vader, I might be tempted to want this. I don't know. It's hard to say. The likeness is exceptional. I mean, I'll put a picture up here. This looks exactly like Sebastian Shaw as Darth Vader. I think Hot Toys did a quarter scale version of this figure a couple of years ago, and it's probably just shrunk down because from what I heard, that portrait on that figure is perfect as well. Lots of good to say about this. I know not every collector is going to be able to get this and the Kenobi Vader. I mean, we have to make a choice at some point in time. And as I've seen, a lot of collectors were waiting for this, waiting to see what it looked like released because they passed on the Kenobi Vader. By all means, that's the prerogative. I get it. I like... More so the Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One look for Vader. I, I, as I said, I can't really tell the differences. I don't know all the nuances from suit to suit, mask to mask, but it's there. A lot of people joke about which is the definitive Darth Vader. And as I've said before, I don't think definitive is a black and white answer. I think definitive is subjective. This may be your definitive Darth Vader. Sebastian Shaw may be the definitive Darth Vader. For me, Hayden. As I said, Hayden's my preferred Darth Vader. I love that Revenge of the Sith early in the Galactic Empire version of Vader. So that to me is more definitive. Now is this one or the Kenobi Vader or the up and coming battle damage Vader going to be definitive? Objectively, no. As I said, it's, it's up to you and how you feel. Now this, this did have deluxe version and that deluxe version did come with the electrocuted looking helmet. And to be honest, I'm not a fan. I don't think it looks great. I don't think it looked good from the get go. I get what they were going for, but it just makes it look toyish, and I'm not a fan personally. That being said, this is a beautiful piece, beautiful likeness. If you're getting it, if you're waiting on it, I'm happy for you. In a perfect world, I'd have every Star Wars release. But I made a choice, and I got the Kenobi Vader instead. It leads, uh, leads me up to a question. Are we getting Vader fatigue? Is there too many Darth Vaders on the market? Now, if you've been around for a while, I'm sure you've had... A couple of Vader's prior to these recent ones, but most notably, Empire Strikes Back Vader is a big one people talk about. I've heard a lot of negative things about it, to be honest. I've never owned it, so I can't really speak on it, but that one's pretty recent. 
You've got the Kenobi Vader that just released. You've got this one that's releasing soon. You've got the up-and-coming Battle Damage Darth Vader, which I'm super excited for. So that begs the question, when are we going to get the definitive in terms of quality? Like, this is the Vader you buy. You ain't got to worry about buying another one. When are we going to get the Vader that tops all of them? That's honestly a hard question. The Battle Damage Darth Vader will be coming with a new nylon suit. So hopefully we'll have to deal with deterioration and pleather uh, flaking and all that. But I think until they release a Vader with a 100% leather suit, it's going to be a situation where you buy a Vader, a couple years later another one comes out, and so on. And you just rinse and repeat until you get that Vader that doesn't fall apart. Now, not everybody is susceptible to flaking and pleather degradation. It just depends on where you live and et cetera, but it's always in your mind. And even me, just having this figure for a month or two, I hope it doesn't fall apart, but I've kind of accepted that it's more so an inevitability that it's going to happen. That being said, we're going to wrap up discussion there. As I said, super glad to see this released. It looks great. If you're getting it, super excited for you. We're going to move on to our next topic. Eh, it's going to be, it's going to be touchy. So, as I've touched on in other videos, Star Wars The Acolyte, I don't give a shit about. I haven't watched it, I refuse to watch it, and I know I feel righteous by saying that. I don't care. But there is one thing I do care about, and spoilers if you haven't seen it, I think it wrapped up a couple weeks ago, so... You ready? They show Darth Plagueis in live action. Don't really know about all the nuances and how it fits into the story. What I do give a shit about is Darth Plagueis from the Expanding Universe and figures. Now, at this point, we haven't seen any figures from the Acolyte. Hot Toys generally has a good way of doing things where they don't really risk a whole lot in terms of making figures for properties and shows, etc. that aren't great. I mean, just from the top of my head, we didn't get any and or figures. And objectively, Andor was great, but it wasn't well, well received. When the sequels were coming out, they only released, what, two or three figures by the end of the sequel trilogy? So I think they have a pretty good idea as to what they need to invest in in terms of making figures from shows. Now, it's no secret that the Acolyte is, has bombed. It's a shit show. I, I haven't seen anything good about it, and I'm biased. If you like it, more power to you. I hope you did. That's, I want you to be happy. But at this point, I don't really foresee them making any figures from the Acolyte on their own accord. Now, we don't know all the in-depth intricacies of their company and how things work, working with Disney and Star Wars. But I would go out on a limb and say that there have been situations and instances where Disney tells them to make figures. Now, they may just say, hey, we want to make this. Can we make this? Disney says yes. That may be how it works. But I kind of feel it may work the other way around sometimes. I'm sure Disney comes to them and says, hey, you need to make these figures. Make them. Now, if that's the case and they do make figures from this show, I feel that would be Disney forcing their hand because, as I said, this show really ain't doing good. Now, if they were to go out on a limb and say, hey, we want to make a Darth Plagueis. We know collectors like Plagueis. Howard Chan loves Star Wars. I'm sure he's familiar with Darth Plagueis and they just decide to make the one figure because they have an excuse to do so. Now, that doesn't mean they had to wait for this show to make a figure. We've seen figures from Legends recently, Dark Empire Luke, this Battle Damage Vader, Revan and Starkiller. So by all means, they could just make a Dark Plagueis and say it's from Legends or whatever. But if they were to make this figure, I would say that they would have to make others, most notably the Sith character or whatever with the mask. Uh, probably a couple of the lead Jedi. So they would have to probably go all in or at least make more than one. It's an easy answer. It's probably not going to happen. Do I want it to happen? By all means. Darth Plagueis is one of my favorite. Sith Lords is one of my favorite characters from the Expanded Universe. Uh, the novel is some of the best Star Wars there is. So by all means, that would be a dopo. But as it stands, I don't think that's going to happen. If it does, I'll be surprised and you can laugh at me and say that I was wrong and talking out my ass, but we'll just have to see. Pretty much wraps up this video. We just want to talk about Darth Vader for a little bit. I didn't post a whole lot of pictures. I just, you know, I'm sure you've seen it elsewhere. I'm pretty sure Sideshow has their first look video out, so you could go and watch that. 
Darth Vader is one of my favorite characters. I wanted to touch on it. I feel I would feel I would be doing a disservice if I didn't speak about it. So, and I have kind of been thinking about talking about the potential acolyte figures for a minute, but decided to just put them both in this one video. So, hope you took something from this. I hope you got something you can think about. If you do have something to say, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. As always, thanks for watching. You guys mean the most to me. Quick little note. We are a hair's breadth away from 200 subscribers, so if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. It'd mean a lot to me. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope I see you on the next one.